Today, I'm talking to a guy who is so into video, he changed his last name to video. Hey, I'm Kevin with Kevin Colby Media, helping you make an impact in the world with video. If that sounds like something you're interested in, please consider subscribing. And now, here's my interview with YouTube growth expert, Owen Video! Put the needle on the record. I am beyond excited to have Owen video on. Not only is he a friend and a mentor, um, he is an amazing teacher and coach, and he knows video so well, his last name is Video. Yeah. How's sure. it going, buddy? It's good, man. And I want you to know my last name hasn't always been video. It was changed uh, over over the border when my great-great-grandfather came across to Ellis Island. Owen Newspaper was his name. <laughs> and they and they changed it to Owen Video. So, you know, it's good to be here, man. I've watched you grow and I'm pumped to be participating with you today. Well, I I appreciate that. So let me let me ask you probably an, an obvious question, but when did you first fall in love with video? 1989, December 25th, 9 a.m. Like I remember perfectly. Uh, that is Christmas morning, and we weren't a wealthy family by any means. In fact, we were rather poor. But we had two big presents under the tree that year. One was a brand new Nintendo with Mike Tyson's Punch Out. And the other was a video camera. It was like this RCA thing where you stick the whole VHS cassette tape inside the, the machine, you know, and you're walking to like the baseball game. It's like, hey, I'm going to watch, I'm going to record the two hour baseball game. But I fell in love with that camera and immediately began making Lego stop motion picks. Uh, we began to do like stop motion magic shows. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat, freeze. <laughs> you know, and then somebody would come up and like pull a rabbit in the hat. And you're like, go. And like, oh, there it is, you know. And, and so we we were playing with the jump cut very very early mm -hmm. in life and and I've had a video camera in my hand ever ever since but it's important to note that I never became like a filmmaker you know I never became like a, a camera expert mm -hmm. um in, in a sense I've I've really played more of a producer role I have the vision I create the show I bring the cast together I get the props made I get the sets made I've uh, I've been an actor uh, in in the pieces that I've produced um and we've we've stumbled along with the cameras uh, and we've done okay. I know a thing or two, you know what I mean? But largely I've, I've looked to find people that are better with cameras than I am to do some of the specialty stuff. And largely I believe you don't need to be a camera expert um, to be successful with video. And, and let's touch on that because I think there's a lot of folks that, you know, are starting out or they want to get started out and they think, yeah. oh, I've got to know everything about right. all the gear, but that's not right. true. No, you really need to know nothing about the gear. I mean, with the Canon M50, you, you can get like a, a crystal clear picture when you turn the camera on. You know, you know what I mean? It's not like, <laughs> yeah. it's not like the very, I remember I bought a 7D off a of buddy and it was like, oh, I'm going to be a DSLR guy now. And uh, I didn't know anything about that camera and I didn't know how to measure. I still struggle like dialing in an ISO and an aperture. Um, camcorders shoot in 4K and 8K, by the way. And uh, with a, I'm using a camcorder now, and everything's in focus, right? It's you don't have the options of a DSLR camera, but you still get the quality and the clarity. And so, you know, I believe in camcorders largely because they're point and shoot, they're 4K, they're just as good as the. Uh, you, you're not going to get a blurred background. You're not going to get the bokeh. You can't take it out to do photography shots with your kids later. Uh, but if your purpose is to shoot video and to shoot a lot of video, then a camcorder is a workhorse, and I would I would highly recommend it. Do you think though that gear becomes a stopping point for a lot of folks? Hundred percent, I do. It's a great question. I feel like in two different ways. Number one, uh, I bought this gear and I don't know how to use it, so I'm not going to get started. But I think the other part of that is I bought this gear and I love gear. And I geek out on it and video and failing publicly on YouTube scares me. So I'm going to focus more on my gear and, and taking pictures and not being vulnerable. And, 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 and I'm not going to actually make the video that this gear was supposed to, to be for. And so I think that gear stops us on two different points, whether you love the gear or whether you don't know anything about the gear. So you you refer to yourself, and you mentioned this earlier, as an executive producer. Think of me as, yeah. as your executive producer. So yeah. what does that really mean? Yeah, kind of like I said earlier, is we actively spend our time on the web looking for talented business coaches, 
uh, chiropractors, people that are um, authors and um, uh, di- different types of business thought leaders, okay, executives, mm-hmm. CEOs, that sort of thing. We we look for those people because that's what really works on YouTube is is taking someone like Dr. Mike. If you're not familiar with his channel, you know, here's a doctor, but maybe Dr. Oz is more of like a maybe like an older school uh, example. But Dr. Mike's a good modern day example of a successful doctor on YouTube. Legal Eagle is a great example of a successful practicing lawyer building a YouTube channel. And so we look for these types of business thought leaders and we do what I mentioned earlier is I uh, bring together all the people and get all the artwork and get all the graphics and help develop the content strategy and help develop the video structure, which I believe is the most important thing any person could ever learn is video structure. And, And then we put together the channel and that's largely done uh, leveraging my you know, 10 years of expertise in this field, but also the expertise of the client, of the doctor, the lawyer, the chiropractor, who, who tells me, here's what I'm passionate about, right? And here's the stuff I want to make videos about. We take that idea and we put a framework around it that would work on YouTube, right? A structure. And so I come in like an executive producer and I'm like, hey, I've got a great idea to take your business, turn it into a show on YouTube. And we've been very successful with that model. So you're a YouTube growth expert. Uh, yeah. I mean, heck, your channel's almost getting close to 60,000 views. And who knows yeah. when this airs? Subscribers, how many... subscribers. So, I'm, I'm sorry, subscribers. Millions of views, yeah. <laughs> subscribers. Um, what is it about helping people grow on YouTube that just really gets you up every day? Yeah, I'll tell you, number one, it's the practice for me. Because I love growing on YouTube. And I, I the Owen Video brand wants, I want to grow on YouTube. I want to create channels with my kids and and channels with my my wife. And so, you know, the way that we do that, the way that we get better is by working on other channels and, and helping them to go further and, and to, to go faster with YouTube. You know, there was a time in my life, I think, where you realize, hey, I'm not the hottest thing anymore, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not the biggest trend. And I think for me, I, you, you know, this is kind of a, a deep, seated emotional thing. I think if YouTube had come out sort of like four years earlier, or if I had stopped drinking and doing drugs, maybe four years earlier, Mm -hmm. maybe I would have been the hottest thing on YouTube. Okay. Uh, But I I felt like there was a time in my career where it's like, okay, that time has passed. So where's my biggest opportunity now? I do think it's in being a personality on YouTube. I do think I have a a huge career in front Mm -hmm. of me in speaking and writing. So don't, don't get me wrong, guys. Um, on, on what I'm saying. I also am seeing a huge opportunity on TikTok right now to do some family stuff and some comedy, which, you know, I think I really love. I don't think I'm great at it, but I love it. Um, I saw that I was good at it and I could make it work. And so I wanted to teach others. I've always loved being a teacher. And what I found is mm. I'm really good at teaching. I'm really good at developing systems and models and templates and then applying that to even somebody with, with very, very um, uh, low skills. In fact, in the very beginning of my career, I was only focused on people with low skills. And mm. then I found that people with low skills tend to also have a low thought of themselves, right? Mm. They don't think they're worth it, right? And so I sort of shifted my focus to more of that that already successful person, right? Like I'm already, I'm not worried about the bills. I'm not worried, like, like our business is good enough. I really want to scale. And that's the person that we look for now, right? We're looking for that person that, that we can show our systems and our models to and uh, and take them to the next level. And I really, really love it. You know who I, I sometimes think of myself as, this is going to drive you wild probably, is um, uh, Tony, uh, not Tony Robbins. Um, come on, Andy Dufresne from Shawshank. Uh, Robbins, married oh. to Sarandon. Uh, yeah, Tim uh, Robbins. Tim Robbins, yes. Tim Robbins, right? Great, great producer, right? Yes. Uh, he's a fine actor. Uh, was was never like the Brad Pitt of his day yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. But I I, th- I relate to him in a lot of those ways. It's like I'm really, really good behind the camera, making things happen. And and I'm not too bad on camera either. So I I I had the uh, the pleasure uh, of seeing you MC in person at Video Marketing World in 2019. And yeah. you know. And and seeing you command a crowd and and move things and when there was the dead air in the room there never was because right. you were always on and moving that and the scene on video so what is the difference for you in yeah. being live on stage and then being maybe live on video you know uh, first of all being live on stage is immediate feedback immediate feedback where on live video it's like fifteen seconds delayed feedback 
you know? And I'm going try, to try to lean into my mic a little bit here. You know, my mic is like falling. So I'm sort of like over here. I'm like, hey, everybody, it's great to be here on the show with you today. But um, uh, I, the question was, uh, I, I view them very much the same. I really do. And the reason for that is because I don't believe in dead air. I believe dead air is yawns. I see it with my children. Like the moment mm. that I start to go, you know, I'll be talking to my kids about something and I'll say something like the reason we want to be kind to strangers is because, and the moment I think and I look away from them, they are out, mm. you know, and our audience is like uh, that. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be like, it's like children, you know, but our <laughs> audience is like that, <laughs> you know, the moment, Oh, thank you. Uh, the moment that we turn away, uh, the moment that we stop to be reflective and do these things that might work in like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, mm -hmm. we lose the audience's attention. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I was blessed with um, the gift of gab, the gab, but I've also uh, learned how to hone it over time. And so we, I, I know how to fill the air. And I think this is where a lot of people are failing on video is you don't know how to fill the space, mm -hmm. you know, and you're, you're almost like treating it like a one-to-one -one conversation where you give your, your, your viewer more time to sit in silence with you than they really need, right? Mm -hmm. in, in that you're showing B-roll of you and your family doing something for way too long, or um, you're showing a graphic, the same graphic for way too long. Uh, little things like this, you know, the nuances of video creation, yeah. I think go back to structure mm -hmm. and what makes me um, unique in the space is that we're not, we're not trying to teach you how to hack YouTube with SEO. We're not trying to teach you like shortcuts to success. You know, we're, we're going to create a great show for YouTube around your expertise. And that show is probably not going to be, you know, like highly SEO optimized, it's not going to be like how to find a chiropractor in Cincinnati. Right. Um, we're going to build a show that's like, um, seven largest scoliosis disasters mm. in America or um, something like, um, you know, biggest chiropractic successes in Ohio. And you kind of show before and afters of your of your clients over the last 10 years. You know, we want to create something for you that's deep and meaningful. And it all comes down to your, your structure and filling the space. If you're going to make a five minute video, that's your space. Filling that five minutes with content that engages and, and engages the viewer and causes them not to look away and X out. So, so let me ask a question that I, I imagine somebody will ask. It's like, yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm really kind of like loose and I think the structure will just kill yeah, me. Yeah. I mean, how do you address that? <laughs> okay. So we're obviously not talking about people. Kevin Colby. We're obviously not talking about Kevin Colby here, <laughs> but look, I, I get this all the time. And I, again, we, we, we work with very, very high level thought leaders and these people have, have been uh, presenting on stages uh, all across the world. Uh, they have been asked to speak at some of the, the the finest banquets and dinners and conferences. But what works for a keynote is not, you know, what works on YouTube. And I have found that just like um, a, a football game, right, a football game has rules and those rules make the game fun, right? If, if there were no rules then everybody just kind of does what they want to do. And it's like, oh, I scored a million points. So yeah, well, I got a million fish bowls and those fish bowls are worth 10 points, but only when you trade them in and, and then you tackled him, but you touched his elbow first. And it's like this, this ridiculous nonsense chaos. Okay. This is what happens when you take a, I'm going to wing it type of person. You get chaos on video. Now mm. it's, it's important to recognize that the structure is not a script. Mm. OK, the structure, what it does, it's it's the rules of the football game. It's follow these seven points in your video and do those points any way you want to. Like that's where your personality comes into play. But all media is constructive. OK, there's never a time in Hollywood where or, or Netflix or when I'm talking about produced media, mm -hmm. millions of views. We can we can have a conversation later about the new media and I hate the news and all that stuff. And I'll, I'll, I'll jump in there with you, but let's just talk. It works. Okay. It works. People watch it. People watch the news for hours on end, you know? Yeah. Why, why do they watch? Cause there's structure. 
And the human mind adapts to structure. We like to see patterns. That's why we have Excel files and we like to categorize things. Even you and I, like we're pretty sporadic sort of off the cuff people, but we still categorize things and things I like to do, things I don't like to do, things I will do for money, things I won't do for money, that sort of thing. And what the structure does is it says, hey, be this part of your personality right here. Tone it down a little right here. And mm -hmm. then uh, uh, mention this thing right around here. Then do whatever you want for like, you know, three minutes here. Make sure you do this, this, and this along the way. And then finally wrap up with here. And so the structure actually gives you um, a roadmap mm -hmm. for being the best version of yourself every time on video. Let me mention one more thing. When you do this, this thing, and I've seen it, okay, I've seen it, especially with like the former um, news and TV personalities that we work with, is, is uh, this inconsistency. One video does phenomenally well, or you felt in the zone, but you're, you're not able to duplicate that every single time, right? That's, that's where structure comes in, right? When you're wild and free, you know, you're sort of pleasing yourself and you're doing what feels good to you as opposed to saying, what am I? how do my viewers want to consume me? Right. And so with structure, structure is the, the, the spoonful of sugar that helps the audience consume the bigness, the boldness of your personality um, in a way that's not overwhelming for them. You know, it's funny you mentioned the, uh, the news analogy, because, you know, my background was in television for a long time in promotion and marketing and working with news and watching how they would structure like the morning news they would have a wheel and because we knew from research and ratings that people were coming at first of all they were listening to morning news a lot yeah. more than watching yeah. and then they would they would come and go like every 10 or 15 minutes so internally it'd be like why are we repeating that every 15 or 30 minutes it's because that's how people are consuming yeah content really good now, on that same note, right, because I worked in radio for a long time. In fact, radio was the last job, was the job that made me decide that I don't need to have a job anymore. Um, it's like if I'm going to get fired from this place, there's no point in going back to anything else, right? You know, I was number one salesperson. Whole different story, yeah. you know, but really what I was was a threat to the organization, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's so interesting because the people who fired me three years later were sitting in my session at Social Media Marketing World, listening to what I had to say. It's funny, as an employee, they didn't know how to hear what I had to say, you know what I mean? They had to fire me to finally be like, oh, let's take a look at this guy's genius. So um, your question again, before I went off on myself was, uh, was what now? Well, I think we were talking about structure and everything, um, but, but you, you, let's, let's transition though into, so right now, I, it just seems like, I mean, as big as YouTube is, it's even gotten bigger. Has it surprised you, though, that more and more news stations and even late night uh, shows and the networks now are like all of a sudden jumping on YouTube? Is it, it, that's yeah, how it feels to me. I don't see a lot of them jumping on on uh, YouTube. And here's why. I think this goes back to the structure, mm -hmm. right? Like TV and radio are built for captive audiences. You're on you're on your, your commute home and you're stuck in that car for an hour. Right. And, and the only option you have is like two other stations. And, and that's radio and TV. Similarly, you know, radio and TV are, are made for these fluctuating audiences where they watch, they're, they're listening for this period of time to drive home and then they're gone. But a whole new wave of people has come on and that's why they keep repeating. You'll notice in my live streams, because I think live stream is very, very close to television and radio broadcast, yeah. uh, live, live Facebook. We, I constantly repeat myself. I say, hey, if you're just joining us, we're talking about X, Y, Z and our guest today is Kevin Colby. And then I go right back into it. I think a big problem creators have today is they, they are over repeating or not repeating at all and not using lower thirds. And since I'm watching in silence on Facebook, I don't know what you're talking about, but I've watched TV and news people struggle to adapt to YouTube because mm. they don't know what it's like to, to not have a captive audience. I have found that former TV people hate the fact, really despise the fact that a consumer can click off of them in the middle of their sentence. They just don't understand. Yeah. Right. So you have to adapt to Facebook. And I'm actually working with a former San Diego newscaster right now. And she's adapting so well. She's like, I want to know what I want to be relevant to the newest uh, generation. And that is where you don't repeat anything yeah. right on YouTube. You have to you have to be very careful to because we, we always want to like dance around the, the delivery. Right. It's just like, hey, today I'm going to show you how to, you know, uh, go fishing in a fishing boat. Stay tuned. It's Owen video. 
Hey everybody, I'm Owen Video and you can subscribe to my channel where we teach you how to go fishing in a fishing boat. And today's uh, fishing lesson, we're gonna talk about the fishing boat that I once had and I'm gonna show you how to do fish and fish and fish fish. You've said it over and over and over, like just get to the damn yeah. dang thing, right? Just, just get just to the me. dang thing, right? Yeah. So, you know, on YouTube, you have to be non-repetitive and, and, and fast. Now, I'm not surprised that there, I see them all over Facebook Live and YouTube Live, okay? I, and I, or I see like mini snippets that mm -hmm. makes sense to me. But what I'm not seeing is I'm not seeing um, news anchors, reporters and whatnot move on to to the space because they don't know how to keep an audience. They only know how, mm -hmm. how to write under the protection of their their powerful entities. But but YouTube is the great equalizer, right? YouTube oh, is yeah. a place for someone like me. I am a libertarian. I believe in freedom and 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 live and let live right like that's me and uh, youtube is that it's like if you if you can't keep my attention i don't have to keep watching you right it's kind of where where i come from and so it's it's a good it's a big challenge to learn how to structure your video in such a way as to keep the audience engaged and you're not going to win all of them you're not going to you know there's a great uh a documentary on hulu right now about the dana carvey show mm. and uh uh, I've always enjoyed Dana Carvey and believe mm -hmm. it or not, like Steve Carell and, uh, uh, Col Cor Colbert, Stephen Colbert, Stephen Colbert wrote for the Dana Carvey show. Unbelievable. And I didn't it was that. massive failure, massive failure. But the next season, that same comedy duo went to uh daily show and absolutely crushed. Right. Yeah. Why? Well, it, it was interesting to watch because they weren't, they weren't responding to the audience, right? It was a different audience and they could see, uh, it was like they watched 25 million people in real time log off the show with the Nielsen ratings, right? Mm. But that, here's the thing. It didn't encourage the comedians writing the show to change their course. They said, as in typical traditional media style, you stupid Americans, <laughs> we're going to teach you what's funny, <laughs> right? And it failed. It totally failed. This is what's happening on YouTube is creators are saying, well, I'm going to make this video. Mm. Yeah, I, I I had a conversation with somebody yesterday who has a very very tiny tiny channel is has no momentum, but is 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 in their strategy. I'm gonna do this, and it's like you, you see, it's not working, right? It doesn't matter. They don't know what's best for them, you know. Hey, do, do, that do you think former that former, the, former TV person, by the way. Do you think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make? maybe yeah. not even underestimating YouTube. So, you know, I, I, I'm yeah. not a YouTuber, but they just, they, they get on there and it becomes all about them. them. Yes. It's not about your audience at all. It has to be about your audience. You know, we are making content that at first I was kicking rocks. Cause I'm sort of an intelligentsia kind of guy. Like I'm, you know, I'm woke, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm unplugged. And, um, uh, you know, I influence the media. The media doesn't influence me. That's kind of me. I'm kind of that guy. Like I, I watch shows with my kids and I'll pause and I'll be like, you see, you see that, you know, that's product placement kids. You know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, Thanks, man. and, and, and I have to, uh, it, you know, it's so cute. Cause my youngest, my youngest is just so brilliant. He'll be like, Hey dad, is that cereal box a product place, a product place they they're selling to me, you know, and he, he's picking it out on his own. But, um, we've actually skewed our channel for a younger audience. And at first I was kicking rocks about it because I wanted to do sort of this like workshop style stuff. But you know what? The audience is like, dude, Owen, give us fast, funny, furious, and we'll enjoy it. And so that's what we're doing. And I told my wife this, I said, you know, it's interesting because at first I didn't want to do it, but now that I'm doing it and they're like, thank you, this is awesome. I love this, right? Last video had 3000 views in four days, which, you know, for an educational channel like mine is, is, is very neat. Um, now I love it. I've learned to love what my audience wants me to do. And, and it's this neat synergistic thing that's happening where it's like, hey, Owen, we love this, but could you do it this way? And your analytics tell you that. Your analytics say, hey, I like the content, but I didn't like this part, this part, and this part. And so, you know, Mr. Beast, biggest YouTuber in the space right now, at least in terms of trending and, and, and media attention and subscribers and views and stuff, you know, says – Find all the things where everywhere a person logged off in your analytics and don't do those things anymore. Hmm. You know, that, that I think is, is key. It's, it's simple, but yet people don't take the time to do it. Well, it's very pride swallowing. Don't you think, you know, yeah. to, to have yeah. illustrious careers like you and I have had careers before YouTube was even a thing mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now. Now 
when you go from career to like this new thing the kids are doing, it's I think it's really hard to transition over. But at the end of the day, you're a chiropractor, you're a dentist, you're you're a, a thought leader, even a, 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 a hobbyist uh, teaching arts and crafts or woodworking on a channel. You know, your audience is the young person. Mm-hmm. Right. The 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 boomer or the Gen Xer watching you, that you're, that's a limited lifetime customer. Eventually, they're going to move on to something else and woodworking will no longer be a thing for them. You're grateful for them while they followed you. But the big the big influx is the new woodworkers, is the new wellness um, uh, people, the 22 year olds, the people graduating high school. That's your audience. And you have to decide if you are going to be relevant or retired. Ooh, I like that. So as as we wrap this up, for the person sitting out there who hasn't started yet, yeah, but they're thinking about, you know, I I want to try this video thing, and or maybe they've just started. What advice would you give them? Yeah, I would I would give you the advice of develop the show, add the structure. I would even say, you know, find five people, 10 people on YouTube that are doing what you want to do. Now, it doesn't have to be content matter because some of you are like, oh, well, my content is so niche. No, n- nobody else is doing it. That might be true. Um, but but find somebody who's delivering video the way that you want to do it. Somebody who has a look and a feel like you and start to analyze their structure. This is what I've spent the last six years doing. In fact, I was sick in bed with cancer for a year Um, getting chemotherapy. And all I did was watch TV, watch YouTube videos and analyze structure. What works for tutorials? What works for unboxings? What works for viral videos? And we teach our clients a structure that's appropriate for their particular model. So find someone doing something that you like, watch them and develop a show, develop five, 10 episodes, Mm. you know, not with a script, but just like, Hey, in this episode, I want to talk about this. I'm going to follow this structure. Here's what it would look like. And get yourself in a place where where now the show is sort of written. Mm. It's sort of out there in your notes. And now it's like, okay, where am I going to film now? You know, Mm. where, where, and then move on to the, you know, at the end of the day, film behind a white wall in your house and just go, right? If your content is so good, which I believe it is, people will will listen to it, right? Right. If you have a good structure, if you have, if you start it with like, you know, hey, everybody, welcome to the show today. We're going (laughs) to, we're going to just, we're going to get, I hate hearing this. We're going to get started in just a minute when more people arrive. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Don't do that. Don't do yeah. that. So start with structure, find models to follow. And then, of course, go to the video marketing school.com and go get one of my free courses. I have courses on free courses on how to write hooks, on how to uh, develop structure and, and, mm-hmm. and all sorts of different aspects of the video creation outside of, you know, YouTube SEO, right? YouTube SEO is, of course, a part of the game, but it's a very, very small part of it. And you can learn it anywhere for free. Right. So build, build structure, build your show and, and then plug it in on YouTube. Excellent. So tell everybody and I'll, I'll put everything you're going to say, I'll put it in, in the description so people can get it. But tell everybody where the best place or places to connect with you. Yeah. Follow me. Uh, follow me on YouTube at Owen Video. You can also uh, check in with me on Instagram where I'm much more active on the daily. So I'm daily active on Instagram and then we upload weekly on, on YouTube where you can engage with our content. And I'd love to see your content. If you're uploading videos, leave a comment on one of my videos. I'll go back. I'll look at your channel, you know, and we can have a conversation. But um, would love to see you there. And thanks for having me, Kevin. Excellent. Excellent. Great mentor. Great friend. I appreciate you taking the time and, and dropping your wisdom as you do and doing the little dance on the way out. Owen Video, thanks for being here, bro. Thanks, bud. Appreciate you. I appreciate Owen taking the time to to be on the channel today and make sure you connect with Owen. All the links are in the description. And again, if this is something that you like, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're going to be doing more of these interviews along with more tips and tools to help you make an impact in the world with video.